Thank you for tuning in to Think Tech Friday. I'm your host, Attila Saras. You know, if you've been tuning in every Friday, you know that we call this show Think Tech Friday. Well, guess what? We've got a great new name for it. It's called The Next Big Thing. Now, Next Big Thing is very cool. It's a new idea that we came up with here at Think Tech. And part of it is giving people with great ideas a place to share those ideas with the world. So, uh, our very first guest on Next Big Thing is John Shear. And John Shear is with us from Ready Zone HQ. Thank you for joining us in the show, John. Great to be here. Thank you. Now, uh, we have a, a lot of stuff here on the table. Looks like, uh, looks like a full meal. Too bad I need lunch before I, <laughs> before I came into the studio. But, uh, you know, your, your company specializes in disaster preparedness. And, you know, uh, you know, you have a great website, and I was looking at it earlier. It looks like everything's on fire, exactly. and it's, it's, meant to, it's meant to scare people, right? Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as, as long as it works. Right. Hey, you're in business. So, okay. uh, for those of you watching uh, live, of course, you can watch us, uh, I'm sorry, you can tweet us live at thinktechhi. Uh, that's our Twitter username, and we have a little tablet here, and we can take your questions live on the air. So, go ahead and uh, send your tweets to thinktechhi and uh, we'll be watching. So John, um, of course, uh, we have uh, climate change, we have all these things that uh, necessitate uh, first aid and uh, you know, having a food supply. Why don't you tell me a little bit about why you came up with this idea and what's your passion behind creating a company like this? Sure, um, so I've been involved in disaster preparedness for about 20 years now. Uh, I've worked at uh, on-site at Department of Homeland Security and on-site at FEMA. And uh, what I noticed is while there's a ton of kind of great information that the federal government can put out, I don't know if you guys can see this, this is a typical kind of uh, information that the, the government puts out. I'm bored already. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty <laughs> much written at the PhD level. It's very hard to find the information and it's uh, on dozens of different websites. And uh, when Fukushima happened, um, and the tsunami in Japan, my family contacted me and they said, John, do we need to worry about radiation? Do we need to worry about our, our food being safe? Do we need to worry about water being safe? And I'd work with the USDA, I'd work with the FDA, and I had to go to dozens of websites to try to figure out you know, what was the right information I could give them to share with their friends and family who might be in Japan or who might be on the West Coast or, or even here in Hawaii. And so I decided there's got to be an easier way to get ready for disasters, and that's why I created the company and the website, you know, Ready Zone HQ. And you know, it's funny because I don't think anyone thinks of stocking up on, uh, what is this, duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> sure you do. <laughs> duct tape until, you know, of course, you know, it, if, if you go to the supermarket and you stock up on duct tape and garbage bags, they're going to think you're a murderer. So it's, <laughs> it's probably something that's better as a kid. And I, I guess what, you're, you're trying to spread knowledge, right? Or are you selling complete kits? Or how's this work? No, the idea is um, similar to when you're trying to get ready for um, a marathon. You know, mm -hmm. you say, hey, I want to run 26 miles. What are the types of things I need to do for that? It's a step-by-step -step process that you need to get ready for that. And rather than telling people, you know, get a kit, make a plan, stay informed, which is kind of what you hear from the government side, um, the idea is to actually prepare people and show them what they can do. And preparedness involves the areas of planning, training, exercises, and equipment. And that's what the website's trying to do, is to give people the information that's out there, drive them to find what they can do to empower them to get ready for any kind of disaster. Yeah, I've seen those buckets at Costco. It's like yeah, a five-gallon exactly. bucket. Yeah. So here's everything you need for a to survive for 24 hours and it's $80 or something sure. like that. It's, is, is that, is it expensive to do this? It doesn't sound like it. Well, it depends. Um, so uh, both the city and county of Honolulu, um, all the other islands, and, and actually the state have great information out there on their websites to talk about the kits that you can get. You can go to radio.gov, and it gives you the information of what should be in those kits. And some of it you can just grab up from your house. I mean, most of us have got duct tape in the garage. Uh, most of us have probably got some type of a radio that's out there. It's just trying to pull that together in one place so that if you need it right away, you've got it. Why do I need duct tape? <laughs> I keep coming back to duct tape, but... I, I think that, you, you know, we need to, to take you out there into the wilderness sometime. You can see all the great and wonderful things you can do with duct tape, you know, whether it's a, a sling that you need or whether it's sealing up your, your house, all those types of things you can do with duct tape. You can do just about anything with duct tape. And so, and I, so I see the duct tape, and then... Um, sure. Let's see, we probably have first aid packs. So this makes sense. And the, I see a hammer on here, an automotive picture. What, what are these... So the idea, is, yeah, the idea is that um, you don't want to just have one first aid kit. You want to have a first aid kit in your car. 
you want to have one in your house, and then you want to have one in your office uh, and workspace. And so the, the idea is that you're taking care of yourself in all three areas. You never know when a disaster is going to happen. And so you want to make sure that your first aid kit covers at least the basics and not and it's not just a couple of band-aids and uh, and that's it. So. You know, we had a power outage about, what, a couple days ago with Pico? Did you? And uh, uh, maybe you slept through it, but I, I heard all about it. Okay. Great. And, uh, you know, it's surprising how quickly people kind of go back to the Stone Age right. when it comes time to a, to an emergency, uh, you know, being out of power for a while. So, um, so I guess, what's the secret? What's your plan? Sure. Well, I mean, that's one of the, the things that we want to look at is it's not just about equipment. You have to have a plan. You have to know who you're going to contact, know what, what you're going to do. Are you going to evacuate? Are you going to stay in your house? Are you going to go to a shelter? If you have a shelter that you're going to go to and you have pets, does that shelter take pets? All those types of things you can do ahead of time oh, so you don't that. have to worry about um, kind of the panic setting in and not knowing uh, what you're going to do. Yeah, you don't want to have to eat your dog. That's exactly. Not... Well, that's why the, the ready meals are, are ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least you have something to feed your dog when, when you run out of dog food. Yeah. But um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm a busy parent. Mm -hmm. I'm a busy guy. Sure. I got lots of things to do. I got to buy cool T-shirts. You know, <laughs> exactly. Uh, when, when should I get a plan together, and how should I mean? Should I frequently go up and update my plan, or how do we do this? That's again the biggest challenge that's out there. Is we want people to start now. We want you to get ready for a disaster before you have to worry about it. You can go to the government websites, ready.gov. You can go to the city and county websites. You can go to the state website. Um, or you can go to Ready Zone HQ. And the idea for my website is one-stop shop to find the information that you need and you know tell you whether it's uh, preparing for tsunami or a hurricane uh, or an earthquake. Here's some of the specific things you need to be thinking about. And what's the what should we be thinking about here in Hawaii? Those are some of the main ones: hurricane, earthquake, and tsunami. Um, obviously, you might need to worry about, um, and that's from a natural hazard perspective. From uh, a man-made hazard, it might be a hazmat spill that might take place. It could be um, uh, some type of terrorist incident that we might need to worry about. Oh, okay. Sure. So, a hazmat spill. So, what do we do if there's a spill? Okay. Other than run. Duct Once tape. again, <laughs> duct tape comes into play. Uh, one of the things you want to think about is um, should you shelter in place or evacuate? So you want to be tuned in, know where you're going to get that information. Um, no more, normally from the government levels, they're going to provide information quickly. You have the emergency alert system that everybody's familiar with. They'll put out the information and tell you. Sometimes it is safer to stay where you are than to try to evacuate someplace. Seal up your windows with duct tape. Uh, make sure you're staying there and stay informed of what you need to do next. Well, we. We're in the, um, you know, I live in Eva Beach. Mm -hmm. That's a great place for hurricanes. It is. Great place. Perfect place, right in the middle of it. Right. So, um, you know, we're due for mm -hmm. another hurricane. Um, I've been told that, uh, you know, the houses can withstand it. Okay. We'll probably be out of power for a while. Mm -hmm. I, we, you know, we, we, we expect power outages every year. So, you tell me, what do I do when there's a power outage other than run around with candles? Sure. Well, How do we keep the food alive and that kind of stuff? At a minimum, you want to have a, a good kit for seven days so that seven you don't days. need to worry about going out and go running the food land and trying to, to fight the lines. You have all the, the materials you need, the food, water, for, to keep you for that seven days, and that'll make you feel a lot better because you're not into a panic situation. When the hurricane warning comes, you've got a couple days to prepare. You'll know what you need to do, and you'll already have it ready to go versus trying to fight the crowds. And if you look at on island, that's one of the biggest challenges we've got. If you go to a Walmart, they might only have three of these first aid kits on their shelves. And so there's not going to be a lot of those to time to, you know, to actually get those kits because they're just not going to be there. And so what should be in our kit? Do we have to, I mean, do you mind if I open this? Sure. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to open up this kit. Right. And I'm going to see a bunch of stuff in here. Now, should I be going through this uh, on a yearly basis and making sure that I have you know, don't have like uh, aspirin that expired like in yeah. 2001, that kind of stuff. Exactly. Or, oh, so you, do, you are supposed to go through it. You want to put stuff down. It's one of the things that I found when we actually put together a kit for my entire family. Um, it's one of the holiday things we did. We just got together and got, took care of the whole family putting together these kits. And the food's already expired from those. And so you need uh, to make sure that you're going back in. A lot of these kits now come for, this is a, a three-year shelf life. 
There are meals that come with a five-year shelf life, but some things you have might only have a year shelf life or less. And so things like you know water supplies need to be rotated on a regular basis. So it is something you need to mark on the calendar. And again, that's kind of the idea behind the website is to give you that tracking ability to be able to go on and, and what are the things I need to worry about uh, step by step process so it's not just kind of uh, stuck on your own. And so we have, okay, so we have food. Should we be stocking anything, um, anything like batteries or mm -hmm. do you care about that kind of stuff? Or? Definitely, you know, at a minimum flashlight and batteries are going to have that. Um, a lot of the radios that you can get are, can be hand crank radios, so you don't need to wor worry about batteries as much. Um, some of these also come with solar power, which is great. And then one of the things that's, that's really neat, that's, uh, this is actually from a local company called Green Path Technology, and this is a, a solar panel. Wow. So that you can have the ability to kind of, um, you know, power your cell phone, power your iPad, iPhones, those type of things, uh, Android, whatever you've got. Um, it just gives you a, a simple connector, and that way if the power goes out, you, at least you've got communication. Oh, yeah, that's an iPad charging. There or you go. iPhone charging cable, right. yeah. It's got a USB charger right there. So, yeah, How much does this go for? Where can I get one? So you can go to my website, Ready Zone HQ. Um, this particular version is uh, about three hundred fifty dollars, uh, uh -huh. and then there's uh, some versions that are a little less that have um, a little larger, a little less capacity um, that are out there. So three hundred fifty bucks for this, and mm -hmm. um, I mean, uh, all right. So we have the food covered. Yep. We've got uh, we've got this now. Should we have some sort of tools? Should yep. we have a, a machete? Should we have knives? So the machete guns? comes into think? play for a zombie attack. That's a great scenario you need to be thinking about. Okay. Um, the CDC and actually the State Department of Health here in Hawaii have done great videos that talk about zombie attacks and being, no. if you're ready for a zombie attack, you're ready for anything. And that's the, the idea. But uh, tools would be great to turn off gas supplies, tools to turn off uh, any water that you might have, so to make sure that you don't have any breaks if there's an earthquake, those kind of things. So it's definitely a good idea to have those in your kit. Okay. I want to talk about guns and knives when we get back, okay. but we have to go to a break real quick. So sure. those of you watching, thanks for tuning in. This is Next Big Thing on Think Tech. I'm your host, Attila Saras, here with John Shear. Aloha. I'm Nicole Horry for Think Tech. For nearly half a century, the Hawaii Foreign Trade Zone Number 9 has brought the benefits of the Foreign Trade Zone Program to Hawaii businesses and entrepreneurs. DBET, the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism, operates Hawaii's Foreign Trade Zone Program to encourage international business and economic development. The Foreign Trade Zone's mission is to increase the amount of international trading activity in Hawaii, thereby providing employment opportunities for the residents of our island state. For more information, see ftz9.org. I'm Nicole Hori. Mahalo. We're back, we're live, and you're watching Think Tech Friday, broadcasting from beautiful Honolulu. Uh, I'm your host, Attila Sares, and uh, here with uh, John Shear uh, with Ready Zone HQ. We're talking about disaster preparedness. And of course, next big thing is all about uh, giving people great ideas, a place to share them with the world. And uh, for those of you who are out there in the world tweeting to us, uh, you can always tweet us at Think Tech HI. Uh, that is our name. And uh, of course, we have a couple of questions here. Uh, one of the questions are uh, about your prices. Sure. Uh, are, are your prices higher or lower than Safeway, and should we be shopping around to do these kind of things, or is it easier just to go to a, a reseller such as yourself? Uh, it's a great question. Um, in general, it's going to be um, better to come to one site and get everything at once than to try to buy things individually. Um, that's what we did for my family. We went to Walmart, we went to Costco, we went to Kmart, went to every place you could think of, and you're buying one-offs versus what a lot of these kits have been put together with the idea for bulk purchases, trying to get the price point down, and trying to give you a deal. And, and that's one of the challenges I wanted to address was, I don't want you to have to go to 14 different stores. I want you to be able to go to one place, find what you need, and be able to take care of that without taking up too much of your time. Well, how about um, you know? How about duration of time? That's another tweet we have here. Mm -hmm. Is about how how long should we prepare for? Sure. Uh, you mentioned earlier. I think it was a, a seven day supply yeah. of food. Was that it? Yeah. So the the again the Honolulu puts out some great planning guidance that's out there. Again, you've got to kind of get into the eighty eight pages of this one and sixty some pages of this the, one. Those go yeah. right next to my phone book in that, the trash. So in uh, case you're wondering, recycle bin, recycle bin. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but it does give you kind of that information. It talks about seven days and the reason for seven days, whereas most of the rest of the country the guidance is seventy two hours, and the concept behind that is we know that the the uh, emergency responders are going to be overwhelmed and they're gonna be taking care of urgent issues. And so you want to be able to take care of your family, 
uh, for that first initial period. And here on the island, it's probably going to be seven days. Um, you know, and, and that really brings me back to another another justification I hear a lot of times okay. is, uh, you know, we need to get this gun because when when something happens, our neighbors are going to come after our food and our water. Is this a valid concern? I have really never seen any after action reports, best practices, lessons learned. I've done hundreds of exercises, and believe it or not, that's never come up as the neighbors taking our supplies and we got to break up the guns. It just hasn't happened. Hasn't happened? Not in this country? Not in this country, not that I've seen. Any other countries? Not that I've heard. I've heard this before. You've you know, heard? I, I'm, I'm I not think it's probably right up there with the zombie attacks that you might need to worry about, but mm -hmm. yeah. No, no, it's the first thing. You know, we got to have the guns because when the apocalypse comes, yeah. You know, haven't, haven't you seen that? What's that show where they're like the, the it's like the guys who hoard yeah. you supplies. Know, so you want me to plug another show is what you're asking? No, 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 no. There's, there's, there's these guys. Doomsday Preppers. Doomsday Preppers. There See, you there you go. Sure. This is right up your alley yeah. right here. They have like like a whole basement like this just right. completely full of mm -hmm. like spam. Right. And it's, it's got like a 50-year shelf life and they're ready for the, the zombie apocalypse slash nuclear attack. Right. And they what have we're, so many guns, you wouldn't believe. <laughs> what we're trying to do is to get people away from thinking about the zombie apocalypse or the nuclear attack and just thinking about day to day. You want to go on a hike. Why not take a radio with you so that if your cell phone cover doesn't work, you might have, you know, get your ham radio license and now you've got an emergency situation, you can contact people. Make sure that you've got some of these things so that, you know, you're going to the beach and so instead of not having your coverage, you've got a solar panel so you can keep your iPhone and iPad charged. And so you work this into everyday life so it's not something that's done once a decade that you have to pull it out. Yeah, this is a good this is a good idea because I think right now we're coming up on hurricane season, right? Uh, in June. In June. Yeah. So we're coming up in six months. <laughs> exactly. We should prepare ahead of time. Uh, but uh, you know, what are these things over here? I see these little canisters. So remember I mentioned about kind of having something in your car, in the office, um, and at home. And so these are the types of things that you can easily have in, in an office environment. You have this in your drawer. Um, it allows you to have you know a personal hygiene kit. So that if you do get stuck and have the shelter in place in your office, remember we talked about that hazmat oh, spill, yeah. right? You've got this in your drawer. You pull it out and you're ready to go. Same thing in your. It might be something in your car. So these are really easy, you know, packaged um, items. And like you mentioned, yeah, you could buy all those individual things separately. But then you're not going to have it in the package. You're not going to have it ready to go. Uh, and, you, and, and the other thing is maybe not bulk purchase, which is the type of thing you might want to do if you're a, a business uh, a, a building manager. Now is this. Um does this have an expiration date on here? Some of the items might. For this one in particular, I don't think there is. But uh, so this is great for 20 years. You can just there you go. buy just it throw once. Throw that in there, and you're good. Toss it in your car. Every time you go around a, you know, go around a bend, you'll hear a little bunk. Rolling back. You'll, and you'll you know that you're safe every time you hear this thing rolling around. That's the idea. And um, you know, to be honest, I had one of these. I had the uh, the previous model okay. of this one, and it, it, my kids turned it into a toy, which ended up in the sandbox, and then got it destroyed. So now it's in a landfill. So I probably need to get another one. Yeah. Um, but uh, but I remember, you know, right around hurricane season, you couldn't find these things right. anywhere. I, I felt really special having one. And my sister actually went through Hurricane Sandy um, and she was without power for a couple days. Um, this is the type of thing that can charge your cell phones. You do a hand crank and it allows you to power up again. And everybody saw those pictures. Everybody's lined up around the two power outlets that one person might have or a generator to try to get powered up. You want to make sure you've got those type of things so you can keep your family informed of what's going on. How about cash? Should we have cash? I'll take it. Anything you got, that'd be great. Uh, I mean, just in general, like, should sure. we be stockpiling? Yeah. Should we have gold bars in our safe? Is this will will our American financial economy collapse due to a hurricane? Believe it or not, there there are plans in place to to um, to take care of the island when it comes to uh, disaster in in terms of cash. Um, the ATMs might be shut down uh, if the power grid goes out, and so the financial institutions have a plan in place. Um, but it is always a good idea to have some cash on hand uh, just in case of that. And again, you don't want to have to run out in a disaster situation and try to go to an ATM that might or might not be working. How about gas in the car? Mm -hmm. Should we keep our cars at a certain level in the gas tank? That's a great point, and that's exactly what we want people to do is, you know, at least half full all the time. That way you don't have to worry about it. And everybody has seen those gas lines. After, as soon as, um, you know, one of the tropical storm warnings comes, everybody runs to the gas station. Just make sure you're, you're topped off and, and ready to go, and you won't have to worry about that. Should we store gas? 
Storing gas is more problematic. Um, there's a lot of issues that come into play with that. That's one of the big problems that the high-rises and the hotels in downtown Waikiki have, is they just can't store large quantities of fuel uh, for generators and things like that. And so it's generally not a good idea to store that kind of thing uh, unless you know, you've got a proper storage place and container for it. Yeah, because it can leak and catch mm -hmm. fire and it's and get contaminated with water mm -hmm. and then there's other issues that come into place. Yeah. So cash, batteries, mm -hmm. half tank of gas in the car, right? Uh, have a kit that we go through right. once a year, would you say? Uh, depends. About once a year sounds about right, but um, the best thing to do is to knock it out in little bites. You know, put something every month that you're going to work on. You know, one month I'm going to update the communications plan, make sure I have everybody's phone numbers and, you know, work addresses, maybe the teachers' night names have changed. You want to make sure all that stuff is kept up to date. So rather than waiting every year, maybe try to do something on your to-do list every month just to a little bit. Mm, all right. Cool. Well, is there anything else you want to share with our worldwide audience about uh, maybe you know, different places on Earth where uh, you, these plans may change? Uh, I mean, the thing I think most people don't realize is the Pacific region is the most disaster-prone region in the world. Um, mm -hmm. We've seen the tsunamis that have taken place in Indonesia. We've seen uh, the things that have happened with the typhoon in Haiyan in the Philippines. It could happen at any time, and if you're you know, taking care of your family, you want to make sure that you're taking some steps now to be prepared, and that way, if something does happen, you're that much further ahead. Perfect. Well, John, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Appreciate you sharing your big idea, and uh, hopefully this will save some lives. Great. So Thanks. I'm excited. Thanks for All the right, time. John. Thank you. Well, those of you watching, stay tuned. We're going to be right back with more ThinkTech. I'm Hong Jiang, host for Asia in Review on Tuesdays. And I'm David Day, host for Asian Review on Thursdays. Both of us broadcast our respective shows at 4 p.m. And my topics tend to deal with uh, questions related to the environment, culture, history, and sometimes human rights. And my shows tend to be on international business, foreign policy, geopolitics, and national security. And you can watch our shows live on the ThinkTech website at thinktechhawaii.com. And uh, you can also watch us on YouTube or Olalo. So come join us on Thursdays at 4 p.m. I'm David Day. And on Tuesdays at 4 p.m., I'm Hong Jiang. Aloha. 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 My name is Dan Bauer, and I'm the general manager of the Plaza Club. The Plaza Club is Honolulu's premier business club. We're located in the heart of the financial district on historic Fort Street Mall. On the 20th and 21st floors atop the Pioneer Plaza, our commanding skylight views, along with our award-winning cuisine and service, are known as the place to do business downtown. We offer professional as well as social events and programs to our members and their guests, all tailored to enrich their professional and personal lives and to give them the cutting edge that they deserve in business. Why don't you consider becoming a member of the club? Call me at 531-7788 or come see me and let's talk business and how the Plaza Club can work for you. Again, my name is Dan Bauer. I'm the general manager of the club, and I'm here for you. Aloha. I'm Maria Kashem of Think Tech Hawaii, and I want to tell you about our Think Tech talk shows. If you didn't know it, Think Tech streams video and audio for all of its shows live on the internet from 2 to 5 p.m. every weekday afternoon, and we replay them all night long on Ustream.tv. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our live stream and YouTube links. Raise your awareness on ThinkTech. I'm Maria Kashem, and I'll see you there. Aloha. I'm Nicole Hori for ThinkTech. For nearly half a century, the Hawaii Foreign Trade Zone No. 9 has brought the benefits of the Foreign Trade Zone program to Hawaii businesses and entrepreneurs. DBET, the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism, operates Hawaii's Foreign Trade Zone program to encourage international business and economic development. The Foreign Trade Zone's mission is to increase the amount of international trading activity in Hawaii, thereby providing employment opportunities for the residents of our island state. For more information, see ftz9.org. I'm Nicole Hori. Mahalo. Aloha. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech Hawaii, broadcasting live from the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. We raise public awareness about tech, energy, and globalism in Hawaii. Technology is critical to our state. A vibrant tech sector will give us new prospects in the global marketplace and will offer great careers and make our economy more resilient. Streaming live on Ustream and Spreaker, ThinkTech allows its hosts and guests invaluable opportunities to report important events and discuss important questions and to be heard here in Hawaii and around the world. 
You can find links to our live streams on thinktechhawaii.com or on our mobile website, m.thinktechhawaii.com. And you can see our archive on YouTube. It's all just a click away. We want to do whatever we can to keep Hawaii relevant, connected, and thriving in the complexity of the 21st century. We hope you will help us in those efforts. Tune in today. This is ThinkTech. I'm Jay Fidel. Aloha. I'm Jay Fidel of ThinkTech. We have some news for you. In addition to our ThinkTech TV show and our Asia in Review show on Olelo 54, as of January 1st, we're adding Community Matters to play also two hours a week. Check out thinktechhawaii.com for the specific times of each of these shows. We hope you enjoy all three. Mahalo, I'm Jay Fidel. We're back and we're live, and you're watching Next Big Thing, new series from ThinkTech, where we give people with great ideas a place to share them with the world. So those of you tuning in, you can also uh, live tweet us during the show. Our uh, Twitter username is thinktechhi. And uh, of course, you can visit all of our previous episodes and our other shows that run throughout the week at thinktechhawaii.com. We stream live 24 seven, so go ahead, check it out. Now, our next segment on Next Big Thing uh, is about a new uh, startup called Dev League, and with us to talk about uh, this new idea and what it's gonna do to change the face of our young culture here in Hawaii is Russell Chang and Jason Sewell. Thank you guys so much for joining us here in the studio, and uh, don't be nervous, this is live. So <laughs> thank you for having us no here. Pressure. Yeah, thank you. No pressure. You. And uh, we have lots of tablets up here, but uh, your tablet in particular is showing your uh, new uh, new project, so tell yeah, us about it. Yeah, Dev League. Um, essentially what Dev League is, is it's a startup, it's a boot camp for, um, for coders. Mm -hmm. And essentially um, we turn you know, amateur coders or motivated individuals into professional web developers in 12 weeks. Now, how did you come up with this idea? Well, one more thing. Mm. We also try to bring the employers to them. Employers? Once they graduate. Oh, I see. So it's a complete cycle. So you come in and you get a job at the end of it. Well, we can't promise you getting a job, but we can teach, you know, essentially teach you how to fish, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so we bring the, essentially we bring the fish to the fish pot. Ah, there you go. So we equip people with the skills to, in modern web development over the course of 12 weeks and really prepare them as much as we can, not only from a coding standpoint, but in, in terms of being a professional web developer. and and tr position them as well as we can to go out into the job market and, and um, seek opportunity out there and do well in, in the process and hopefully land a, you know, an exciting job that they're looking for. Now, how did the two of you come up with this idea? Well, we were working together in another previous startup here in Hawaii. Um, it's called Readery, and um, essentially it failed. It didn't work. And so coming off of that uh, failure, we said, look, we want to start up another company. There's, there's just a shortage of developers. And because I was working with Jason already at a previous company, and he is a developer, and we're going to hang on to their developers as best you can. You're going to grab them with two hands. And uh, it was just a shortage of, of developers to build the next product company, something that we wanted to build. And you say, look, if we can't you know, find somebody to, do, to help, you know, help us build this, why don't we create an opportunity for, for you know, more developers to exist here in Hawaii and build their own in that sense? So it, it's really about technical literacy, if you think about it. Mm. Right, which is supposed to be the, 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 you know, learning to code is the language of the 21st century. Well, I'm a coder, so I, I, I get what you're trying to do. Uh, what languages do you want to teach here? Uh, so we're primarily focused kind of on, you know, the cutting edge web development. So uh, we're going to be teaching JavaScript, a bunch of the JavaScript, newer JavaScript libraries like AngularJS. Uh, we're going to be doing Node.js on the server. We're going to dive into HTML5 and CSS3, so really kind of uh, creating that new breed of really strong front-end developers that understand truly the whole stack, but um, can really kind of capitalize on the power of, of being able what you can do on the front end now, and while still understanding underlying you know core concepts of, of software development. Um, so really, you know, creating rich you know some of these rich client-side applications and, and rich user experiences. Now these are web. These are web-based languages. Yes. How about something like Objective C, so that we can get some app developers uh, the, we're not there yet that 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 is on you know on tap so 
Um, basically, we, we we chose JavaScript basically on demand alone. So we went out there and we looked at the job numbers. You know what what are people in demand for, mm -hmm. um, and, and looked at real job postings and and the, actually the front end web developers. And you know, originally was. originally I wanted to teach Ruby on Rails, right? Mm -hmm. And then Jason comes along, and gives me metrics, right? He starts. You see, that you go to Indeed.com, you take a look at how many jobs are in Ruby on Rails. X amount of numbers in there. It's very few. Yeah, very few. And then he goes and says, well, here's the JavaScript ones. It's like 70,000 jobs are posted out there mm -hmm. for JavaScript. And basically, he had my attention. And it's an annoying language, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> and you can spend a lot of time on it. So th right. there has to be some sort of secret sauce you guys have. And is that based on your background? Do you have some sort of special experience that allows you to do this better? And say a community college or some other small training organization. Uh, well, number one, I mean, I have been a web developer for the last ten years, so I do have personal experience. Um, number two, th you know, in, in, in terms of anybody else being able to do it, there's really not right now. Is, is the is really that's where the opportunity was? Is that there's places to learn programming, um, but nobody's really teaching the web. Nobody's really teaching mobile, and, and specifically these languages that are in high demand. <coughs> so. I mean, really, there are, there are no alternatives. So that that was why we looked at it. Is is you know these these jobs are in demand, but really, there's no one specifically teaching exactly this. <clears throat> you know, if people are going through other programs, they can learn on their own, but they don't have that mentorship. They don't kind of have that guidance to really not only learn the language, but really learn from experienced people and, and get that mentorship and and really again, kind of more of the whole of of what a software developer is. Is also well, you just you, you promised that that introduction at the end of the program, or at least the ability to give them the skills they need to actually get a job. I think it's really important to have the outcome, right? I mean, th th that's what people would come to a, a boot camp for, right? I mean, the outcome really is um, being introduced to uh, potential employers and potential employers who are looking to hire uh, front-end web developers. Um, it's a very high demand, high paying, um, constantly growing, growing sector. Uh, we went to speak to the universities uh, here in, Ho in Hawaii and some of the public schools and also the private schools and what we found was it wasn't being taught at the um, university level and neither is it being taught at the high school level either. And we went to speak to the people at the community colleges as well. And they look at uh, all of those institutions, you know, they, they looked at this as a very interesting thing and they said, wow, you definitely could be a finishing school for, uh, for our graduates because you're connecting them to the employers. Well, and what kind of opportunities are there for someone with a JavaScript programming background here in Hawaii? Because I was under the impression that one of the reasons that we have this brain drain problem on the island where our best and brightest talent is being recruited to the mainland, and this is something that's happening not just here but all across the country. Yeah. We turn on any talk radio show and they talk about in every rural America place. Uh, you know, they are moving to the big cities for that reason. So. What kind of jobs are here for developers? Uh, well, that's kind of part of our employer network is that we're really reaching out and, and past just the job postings and really reaching out to companies that are in the space and, and saying, you know, are, would you have a need for these people? And, and really across the board, we're, we're, we're getting yes answers. Like, yes, we need those people. We don't even post for them because we haven't been able to find them recently. Um, but we're interested in looking at them. And then, um, so that's kind of, there's more current opportunity out there than, than kind of it looks like sometimes when you go look at job boards. Um, the other part of it is, you know, you, you have all the focus on, you know, kind of the startup paradise happening right now and, and people trying to build companies and, and keep them here. And, and obviously to, you know, to sustain that ecosystem and, and to keep those companies here, we're also going to have, the, have to have the developers here. And, and hopefully over time, you know, those opportunities continue to expand because they're kind of coming out in tandem as the companies are starting and, and because, you know, hopefully with developer talent here to support them, that they do stay here and, and don't either have to, you know, go to the mainland to, to be a successful company or really bring in talent from outside that, that may or may not stay here in those jobs. Are well, I mean, so what, which companies are looking to hire? People like I mean, it just just I mean, is it banks? So what industries? What verticals uh, are we looking at? We're looking not so much. Um, I, I mean, we're kind of reaching out to more of the the newer companies, um, you know, that that really are focused on the web and mobile, mobile or mobile on the web, and um, not so much kind of you know, uh, we're not teaching kind of the the 
older backend systems like we really aren't focusing more on uh, modern me, development. Let's be more specific yeah. for him. Google has said yes, they'll take a look at the resumes that were coming out of our, our Dev League Google. program. Oh, okay. uh, Uber also said that they would take a look at our program. We've also worked with um, some of the accelerators here um, and some startup companies. We've approached them and they resoundingly said yes, and we're happy to take a look at the resumes of our graduates coming out of the program. This will be in, uh, you know, starts on January 27th, ends on April 25th, end of April, early May. Uh, we worked hard at getting this employer network you know, put together, but of course we are still constantly going to look for additional companies. Um, you know, I think the, the real question, you asked, you asked the question I think is really interesting because it, it talks about the brain drain, right? And mm -hmm. you know, I, I was away for 16 years and I came back, and people come back for a couple of reasons really, but for family and to raise their kids here. Um, it, it, was, it was asked of us the other day from a, a, a Silicon Valley PR person, and it was a really interesting conversation. And she said, um, why is it that we send all of our best, uh, we, we, let our, we let our best talent go outside of the islands? Um, what if we were to able we were able to do something about that here? And so, if we can create a, a company like Dev League and have it create some of the homegrown talent here, what's stopping other companies from coming here to look for our talent pool? Hmm. As we have to go out there and look for jobs, why don't we grow it here and have them come to us? Now that may be a longer generational thing, or might take a little longer to do, but we need to start somewhere because it is something that you know is, has been a problem for a while and people talk about it. Well, I think Jason and I were trying to do something about that. Well, it, it's about proximity. I mean, we are, if you look at Ireland as an example, they, mm -hmm. they were in the same you know, situation. They, they created a very um, big tech industry and it kind of fell apart, but their proximity to Europe is what helped them. We have proximity to Asia as well as the Pacific. So that's, that kind of puts us in a unique place. But at the same time, we have that huge time difference. It's very, it's very, troublesome yeah. and also uh, you know we also have a youth that is interested in having a hundred thousand dollar income right out of college and sometimes that's not realistic for you know, someone in the IT profession well it's funny because on the way here in the car I was thinking about that and you know I know some of the um, Jays over here um, you know what's really interesting is that the there's a there's legal professions there's accountants there's you know doctors and everything all of them have have professional credentials right and to get to a level of income which you know is way over six figures in that sense right uh, the internet has been the, you know one of the largest I think you agree that has been one of the largest wealth creators of, of, of our generation and it's still going on right now right um, well it's spread it out yeah, you spread it out. But so. I mean, it's, in, in many cases, I mean, you can learn to code, which is the you know the language of the 21st century, and it is the foreign language for us, right? And you can get a job that is anywhere between six and a hundred thousand dollars, you know, for for front end web developers. Um, you may have to travel for that. You may have to move around a bit for it. You might even find that here. There are some companies here in Hawaii that will that have that range. So I want to find out exactly how you guys get the jobs for the people, but we're going to have to do that right after this break. So those of you tuned in, you're watching Next Big Thing. I'm your host, Attila Suresh. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Aloha. I'm Nicole Horry for Think Tech. For nearly half a century, the Hawaii Foreign Trade Zone Number no. 9 has brought the benefits of the Foreign Trade Zone program to Hawaii businesses and entrepreneurs. DBET, the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism, operates Hawaii's Foreign Trade Zone program to encourage international business and economic development. The Foreign Trade Zone's mission is to increase the amount of international trading activity in Hawaii, thereby providing employment opportunities for the residents of our island state. For more information, see ftz9.org. I'm Nicole Hori. Mahalo. We're back, we're live, and you're watching Think Tech Friday, our new show, Next Big Thing, is a platform for people with great ideas to share them with the world. I'm your host, Attila Saras. Joining us today uh, to promote their new startup, Dev League, is Russell Cheng and Jason Sewell. Uh, and uh, of course, these are two very high-end, high-tech people. And uh, you're going to change the face of Hawaii's, uh, I guess, coding youth by offering a boot camp called Dev League, where they can come and then for 12 weeks, they, uh, they are given intensive lessons and at the end of it they come out and have a better chance of getting a job than they did before and so uh, that better chance is what really I'm interested in and how do we get those jobs so how exactly can you help someone get a job at the end of this camp okay um, why don't I go first in this 
I think one of the things that, you know, if you think about how people are uh, learning computer programming at this point in time, they go to school, they take computer science in it, they might do an engineering degree. Um, a lot of people who are coding, you know, for the web have learned from a book, right, or have learned online. YouTube. It's yeah, great. it's great, right? But the, the you know, of course, learning through the book. We know that this is a con you know, it's like entrepreneurship and coding is a contact sport. You want to work in, in a development team, uh, otherwise you're working by yourself and you come up with only ideas that you have from yourself, right? Um, what what's what's interesting is that it, you can you can go online, you can learn from these you know massively online open courses, right? MOOCs. Uh, the dropout rate is actually about 91% or so inside there. It, you have to be really, really motivated to do it. I dropped out after, on Code Academy after three, three lessons, and it's, like, it's too hard to do, right? Um, what we're doing is providing an immersive course that's over, you know, over 12 weeks, and it's fairly intensive, and you know, Jason can go over the, the, the curriculum specifically about that, but um, people are, are teaching themselves on this, and so they don't have the, the, the opportunity to work in larger teams doing constant deployment and putting out you know, products that people can use on the internet. Uh, they may be able to do this from Hawaii remotely, which is very interesting, uh, but of course some of these people may want to go for jobs of, um, you know, on the mainland and, and elsewhere. Mm. And so um, when it comes time, you mentioned it's coming up on the 27th, right? January 27th, yes. So what are the prerequisites? How do I qualify to go to this boot camp? Uh, so if people come to the site devleague.com, uh, we have an application form. We kind of look to get a little bit of information about the people and uh, at the point that they apply, we schedule a call with them, figure out what they're, what, why they're interested, what their goals are, and really see how we can align with them. Um, and, and really, you know, what we're doing is when people come to us and, and really tell us, telling us where they've been, where they want to go, um, we're, we're listening to everybody that comes through and, and trying to figure out how we can kind of focus on them in the, in the larger context of, of, you know, moving the entire course forward as well. So it's important. So we get to know people and then uh, we give them basically a litmus coding test uh, to kind of see where they are, where their knowledge is, and it's, uh, it's not pass-fail. We kind of just want to get a gauge of where they are and based on that, uh, we'll then work with them on kind of, um, based on where they need work, we, we basically work with them to get them up to a, a starting point before the course so we can all kind of start on the common ground. So you're like a counselor. Uh, yeah, it feels like it sometimes, yeah. But, I mean, it, it's, it's good. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I mean, the, the people that are coming to us really, um, they believe in it. They, they, they want a better future, and, and they're, you know, they're giving me their time, and I, I, you know, I'm only happy to uh, re return the favor, and, and we want to see them succeed. And, and even when, um, you know, you mentioned how do we get them jobs, we, we don't get them jobs necessarily as much as we, we prepare them for jobs, and we bring opportunity to them, and we, we set them up with the skills and um, as a professional that they're, they're then going to be able to go into those interviews that um, of the companies that we you know put them in front of and be successful and, and be competitive with other people that are that are applying for these jobs. Mm. Can, can I add something so. to what Jason is saying here? Um, I think there's really about three parts to it. Really, um, you can look at it as coding. And that's one, and it's the major part of the the the, you know, the the curriculum, the program, right? The other part of it is really collaboration, working in pro, you know project teams, working together, delivering on things, failing together, and and rebuilding things together, right? And the other part of it, and and towards the tail end of it, is really helping to interview, pro, you know, provide uh, helpful resume tips, every, anything to to prepare people to have a great package so that they can look presentable and and you know to potential employers. So should they go to an interview wearing? A NASA T-shirt and, and a sports coat. It depends where we Yeah, it might, it might be totally appropriate. <laughs> Just wondering. <laughs> it might be totally appropriate. Uh, I did want to add something as well too. Um, you know, you had mentioned this is just—it's not just for the youth. Death League is not just for the you know young young people who are trying to get into coding and stuff. I mean, this is an opportunity for people to learn tech literacy, right? Tech literacy. So this may be for. Let, let, let me be more. Let me be more straight about it, with it. The, you know, the the public education system, even the private school educational system, really doesn't teach coding. The what we're trying to teach here, and at the universities, they're teaching a slightly different type of coding, where it's you know to work for banks and insurance companies, and there's nothing wrong with that. But what's when we spoke to some of the students that were out there, that we potential potential students, and now they are students, um, have said, that I want to work for internet companies. I want to work for some startups. I want to work for some software companies. I'd like to work for Google. I'd like to work for Facebook, etc. 
etc. And how do they get there if they have, don't have that type of experience? We're trying to provide people with that experience. Now, the schools provide you with a lot of basis of the of, of a foundation, which is awesome, which is great. Uh, but there's a lot of people who are in the workforce, who have graduated from college, who are in community college, who may have dropped out of high school or even out of college, right? Um, this is an opportunity for them to really get into technical, you know, uh, technical literacy and really get back in the game. So this might not only be for you know, 18 year olds or 22 year olds. This might be for you know people who are who have kids and and who you know the kids are about to go back to school and, and it might be for people who are who are in the military um, who are you know about to you know veterans who are, who are about to leave the military or are wounded warriors or are families of the military and they're looking for something interesting to do beyond outside of the military so there's, I think there's a lot of different segments of the audience and um, this might be an alternative Jeff League might be an alternative to that now you're going to structure this like I'm sure you know about WordCamp WordPress camp same thing they get together for a week they all hack WordPress apart so yours is obviously a three week course but is this 12, 12, 12 week course, course. Yeah. 12 week course yeah. so three months yeah. uh, is this going to be ongoing or are you going to kind of do, is this your pilot and then you're going to see how it goes you're going to do some follow ups some feedback how is it going to work this is the first one and, and we're we're only going to grow from here i mean we really want to um, grow into you know kind of a, an institution that really um, you know when you talk about the younger generation i mean you know that that's something we want to grow into also and, and really um, you know continue to pr provide provide you know a, a platform for this going forward just to keep on educating, which is, yeah, which is yeah. understandable. And, yeah, and like Russell said, you know, technical literacy, just, you know, um, in creating an opportunity, a, a platform to, you know, to to teach that and provide opportunity for people. And um, and, and that will only continue to cascade, hopefully, going forward. And, and and hopefully we can stop, you know, stop that brain drain at some point and, and really have a foundation here. Well, it sounds to me like you also want to create products that are just like your website. So uh, devleague.com, is that it? Devleague.com, I think. Devleague.com, I think, yeah, is, yeah. is up on the, is up over here. But it, it looks like a pretty sophisticated site. Did you make that, Jason? Uh, that's actually just our logo, but I, I did. You made the website? I didn't make the logo. I made the website. So. Yeah, the website. I'm a, I'm a programmer. I'm a designer. They don't, they don't let me get near that. So who designed the logo? Stuff, so. we, uh, um, we actually had that commissioned to an artist. Uh, oh, OK. It was actually um, somebody in Europe. Wow. So we we lucked out. We um, we briefed the company on it, and and we received you know quite a bit of um, designs, and we worked with them closely and settled on a design. It, it was pretty. I guess it was pretty universal. Yeah, so I like we it. like it, <laughs> and we hope other people do as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's nice and simple too. Yeah, it's simple, and then the, I, yeah, the website's simple too. So we encourage people to come check it out. And I did do the website, so if you want to critique my work. Oh, okay. Go check it out. Yeah, and that's devleague.com. Devleague.com. Right? Devleague.com. And, um, and yeah, and we encourage everybody to apply. Um, you know, we really do like talking to people and finding out even even if this format is not for them. Yeah, come talk to us. We you know we want to hear feedback. We want to respond to feedback. Um, we also have two scholarships available um, for the upcoming uh, cohort starting again January twenty seventh. We still have two scholarships out there that. Uh, we really want to fill one as a female hacker scholarship, so um, we want to get more, you know, women hacking. We've, you know, we both have daughters. We both worked with some, you know, amazing women. My daughter's over there. I'd love to see her, you know, kind of come up in, in having more opportunity. Um, so we really want. So uh, we're giving 25% off to to one female applicant, um, and we have none to date. So please, please, ladies, apply. Um, and then we also have a low-income scholarship that is actually 100% tuition waiver for um, really to, you know, we have some unique challenges here in Hawaii. There's people that have the, the drive, the motivation, and the intelligence to really succeed, but maybe not the finances for higher education. And we want to give them, you know, we want to provide them opportunities. Well, since you brought it up, how much does this cost? Um, so normally it's going to be 10000 That's our other discount is, is since this is our first one, we know we're getting started. Uh, we want people to come, you know, give us a chance and, and let us, you know, uh, work for them. So everybody is actually at a discount, 20% rate, 8,000 for 12 weeks for the first, the first uh, session. The first only. cohort. Yeah. 
that's pretty good, I yeah. gotta say. Yeah. So yeah. we're trying, yeah. we're trying. Yeah. You know, we just a couple in. iPads. It's not a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the, the university, I mean, University of Hawaii, HPU, Shamanai. I mean, they charge a considerable amount of you know, tuition for um, for their four-year programs, and they're very good programs. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, not everyone wants to spend four years in in in, in a program. So this is a 12-week opportunity. Um, we think it's you know one of our one of the first that we can provide. Um, you know, you did ask the question if whether this is you know, one off or anything. It's really the start of, of, of you know trying to build tech literacy here in Hawaii, um, at least from the Dev League point of view. At least learn you know to learn to code. Join the movement, learn to code. I mean, that's that's join that's the movement, learn to code. And of course, if you're an employer on the mainland and want to send one of your staff here for three months. To come learn yeah, JavaScript, especially, yeah, especially during the winter, they won't, right? they won't say no. I yeah. guarantee you. I think you guys are really onto something. Or well, Russell, Jason, really appreciate you guys coming by and sharing, uh, you know, sharing what you guys are doing. And I want to hear about how it goes Absolutely. three months from now. So be sure to yeah. come back on Think Tech. Thank you for having us. Yeah, here. thank you. All right, guys. Appreciate if you like our show, uh, go ahead and like us on Facebook, and of course, you can live tweet us during the show at Think Tech HI. That's our Twitter handle. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'm Attila Saras, and stay tuned for more Think Tech, and be sure to join us next week when we do more of Next Big Thing. Aloha.